In this video, we're going to talk about end product inhibition, and we're going to describe how metabolic pathways can be controlled by this mechanism of end product inhibition. And then we're going to explore this by having a look at how end product inhibition applies to the conversion of threonine into isoleucine. Okay, so end product inhibition, what's that all about? End product inhibition is where you have a chain, so you have a chain of a metabolic pathway where one thing is converted into another and is converted into another and is converted into another, right, by a series of enzymes, where then the final product of this metabolic chain is going to act as an allosteric inhibitor of one of the upstream enzymes. So one of the enzymes that worked to basically produce it in the first place, so it, it will block that enzyme. And it does this by non-competitive inhibition, which we talked about in the previous video. Okay, so that's, that's all end product inhibition is. It's useful because it's a way of regulating what the level of our final product is, right? Because as you can imagine, the more that you produce of this final product, right? Let's, let, if we draw a graph here, and we have concentration on the, on the y-axis of the final product, and here we have, we have time on the x-axis, then as the concentration of this final product goes up, right, that's gonna cause increased inhibition, and that's gonna mean that there's less formation, so the level will go down again, and then as the level goes down, there's less inhibition, so the level increases again, and you kinda of get the idea, right? That you, it's a way of maintaining relatively constant levels of these substrates, so it's quite useful. So that's what end product inhibition is. And we can apply end product inhibition to a particular metabolic pathway, okay? So in bacteria, okay, actually let's start off by saying isoleucine and threonine, these are amino acids, right? Remember how we said that there's 20 different amino acids and that you can like work out which amino acid is coded for by codon? Okay, isoleucine and threonine are on that table, okay? They're, they're one of those 20 amino acids. And in humans, isoleucine, this particular amino acid, is essential. Now what that means is that we have to take it in in our diet because we can't make it ourselves. So we have to eat isoleucine, that's basically the idea. In bacteria, however, isoleucine is made, it is not, so they don't eat it, they, it is made from another amino acid which they, we call threonine. Okay, and isoleucine is an example of an end product inhibitor. So let's just have a look at, at how that is. So basically, we start off with this original product, right, threonine, and we want to convert that threonine into isoleucine. The way we do this is we use a particular enzyme, enzyme one, which is then going to convert it into uh, this intermediate substrate. Then this substrate is then gonna be taken by enzyme two and converted into another substrate. And then a third enzyme is then gonna convert this, this substrate into isoleucine. Okay, you don't have to know the names of the enzymes or any of the substrates in between. You just have to understand that isoleucine is then an allosteric inhibitor. Okay, so it's, an, it's a non-competitive inhibitor, non-competitive inhibitor of the very first enzyme that converted threonine into its first substrate. Okay, so this, these two enzymes are, are the same because the, the isoleucine will block the, the ability for threonine to bind to the active site because it changes the shape of it, okay? So isoleucine will act as a non-competitive inhibitor by blocking threonine's ability to bind to its active site. So it's an example of an end product inhibition, okay? So just know that example and just be able to recall it. But remember, you don't need to know any of the enzymes, just the fact that it's a, it's a non-competitive inhibitor. So what are the key points to take from this video? It's that end product inhibition is when the final product of a metabolic chain, right? It's kind of important that it's a metabolic chain because cycles won't have an end product, right? But when these end products inhibit an upstream enzyme, so an enzyme that basically formed it in the first place, um, and that threonine is converted into isoleucine in bacteria, and that this is a particular amino acid. Isoleucine is an end product inhibitor as well. So that's all you have to know for that video.